Well, it's, uh, it's great to be here. Uh, uh, as Miguel said, I'm Jeff Donahue, a professor of computer science at Baylor University and, and also an, an ICPC volunteer. Uh, and today I want to talk about uh, engaging collaborative competitors. So what I want to talk about is, you know, for the, the ICPC is, is centered around at its heart competition. Right, it culminates each year in a world finals. We get the top 128 teams or whatever it is, uh, depending on the year. We get these teams together and we try to decide who's the best of the best in the world. And we know that, that competition is really a great mechanism for getting people to improve. The, the example that I use is, you know, many, many years ago, decades ago, uh, a human being able to run a mile in four minutes seemed like an impossibility, right? I mean, how, you know, there were all sorts of explanations, physiological explanations about there could never be enough oxygen, there could never be enough energy for humans to actually be able to run this fast. And so what, what happened? Well, someone ran a mile in four and a half minutes. So if you want to be the fastest in the world, what do you have to do? Well, you, you got to run a mile in four minutes and in 29 seconds. And of course, this goes on and on and on, and eventually somebody ran the mile in four minutes and one second. So if you want to be the fastest in the world, if you want to have a world record, what are you going to have to do? Well, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to run that four-minute mile, and then you're going to have to beat the four-minute mile. And so, so competition is a key aspect of us being able to, as a group, as a community, set a standard. So as a professor, I can, uh, you know, in my classes, I can attempt to set a standard. I can say, well, it's reasonable to solve this many problems. I teach networking, so I can say it's, it's, it's reasonable to teach, to program this many network assignments in a semester. And no matter what number I give, my students say, well, that's, that's too many, right? And if I say five, then five is too many. If I said four, then four is too many, right? But if through competition, if the team that's next to you has solved in five hours, if they've solved six problems, then the question of whether six is reasonable has been answered, right? There's really no argument that you can give that says, well, six problems in five hours, that's a, that's a completely unreasonable uh, expectation because the competitors have set the expectation. So, you know, the four minute mile was broken because the competitors set the expectation and through competition, uh, it really drove the competitors, if they wanted to be the best of the best in the world, it really drove them to, to be one second better and another second better and another second better. And now, uh, you know, the, these top competitors uh, need to be able to uh, run a four minute mile as just a matter of, of, of their training. So the question is uh, that I want to talk about is how do we get to this point? So it's, it's fine to say that, uh, you know, you need to be the fastest in the world. You need to solve more problems than, than anybody else. You need to be a better problem solver. The question is, how do we get there? And so one of the ways that I think that, that, that we get there is through engagement, right? Just telling someone that they need to be faster, that's not the way we, we do it. We have a coach, the, the people join together on teams, uh, they train with each other, they encourage each other, they engage with each other. And so, so engagement, I think, is a, is a critical component to building these top competitors. Uh, also, you know, we think of competition, and sometimes people think of competition as a bad thing, right? It's because it's me beating you or you beating me. Uh, and, of course, we know that competition has significant benefits because, it, as we already talked about it, it sets that standard and it raises that standard. Um, but being better competitors can be done through collaboration. And so what I, want to, what I want to talk about is how we can use collaboration and engaging collaborators to make better problem solvers in, in ICPC style problems. So one thing is, uh, I, you know, I want this to be an interactive talk. So if you guys have questions or comments or discussion, uh, you know, feel free to, to stop me and jump in. So I have a student that comes to me uh, and she says, I want to be a competitor in the, in the ICPC. And, I, and in fact, uh, I want to be a world champion. I've seen uh, the opportunities for being 
uh, one of the best of the best in the world, the doors of opportunity that that opens. And, and I also, I just want to be a better problem solver. Uh, how, how, is it that I, how is it that I do that? And, and of course, from a university perspective, to give students these opportunities, we want them to be the best problem solvers that they can be. And when we, of course, when we're doing that at all the universities around the world, we develop the best problem solvers in the world. And of course, that's a benefit to society because we have some really complicated problems that we need to figure out solutions to, right? For every new uh, aircraft that we develop, it's the most complicated aircraft ever built, right? It only stays in the air because the computers can control the, the flight surfaces. And the next one that comes along is gonna be even more complicated. Well, I wanna make sure that the plane that I'm flying in, that the problem solvers that worked on that even more complicated problems uh, that they are really the best problem solvers in the world. I, I don't want to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, 20, 30,000 kilometers, 40,000 kilometers in the sky and, uh, and figure out that the, com the computer programmer or the engineer was uh, pretty good but not great. So we all have a reason uh, for wanting to have the, these, these problem solvers be the best in the world. Uh, and and one, of the, it, one of the things that, that we might set as an objective for ourselves is the average contestant at, at a contest in 10 years from now should be better than the average contestant now. At the extremes, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to really, to, to really affect, right? Every once in a while you have this, you know, this sort of brilliant problem solver that's, you know, maybe the best in 100 years. Uh, and so, uh, you know, maybe affecting the endpoints is, is, is a more difficult proposition. Uh, but if, if we're really coming together to build these great problem solvers, then the average contestant uh, in 10 years from now should be able to beat the average contestant in 2015. So how are we gonna do this? Well, when the student comes to you and says, how do I get started, you know, what is your answer? So we have all sorts of wonderful technology for students to practice, but the question is we don't wanna say, to be able to practice, you have to start running, you know, why don't you start by running a four minute mile? Well, that's, that's not a practical thing to ask. Why don't you start, you know, by, by downloading the hardest uh, problem ever given at the ICPC World Finals and solve that problem and you'll be in great shape, right? Well, that's not a practical place for, for students to start. How do the students develop these skills? Uh, so we want to be able to provide the infrastructure and we want to be able to provide the mechanism for those students to develop these skills. But part of, part of the way that we do that is through collaboration and through engagement. So we don't want this to be a solitary activity, go away, solve the hardest problems ever at an ICPC World Finals and then come back and talk to me, right? The, the, they're they're going to go away and, and never come back. So what we want to do is we want to be able to provide an infrastructure for students to get started, right? We want to provide an infrastructure for students to be able to develop those skills, develop those skills over their time at the university, and continue to develop those skills over their lifetime. So, so how, do we, how do we do this? So there are a couple of solutions uh, to this that, that, we, that we use. Yeah? I have a question. Uh, we defined So one of the metrics we could use is we, the number of problems that they can solve in a, in a fixed amount of time. Another improvement metric is, you know, what, so I start off and I can do simple sequence branch and loop solutions and, and now I know uh, greedy algorithms or now I know, you know, standard search algorithms. So you can show improvement and then how do you compare, you know, contestants from now to then? I mean, one thing would be to give them the same set of, if they haven't already seen the, the set of World Finals problems in 2025 from the 2015 World Finals, you give them the, uh, the 2015 World Finals problems and you say, you have five hours, how many can you solve? And hopefully, uh, the average team 
uh, can solve more in, in 2025 than they could in, in 2015, right? I mean, that as, as university educators, I think that's what we're, we're called upon to do, not, not to really make as good a problem solvers as we have today, but future problem solvers, they need to be better because the problems are gonna be more complex. And also collaboration is important there because as things get more complex, not only do I have to be a better problem solver, but I have to be a better collaborator. I have to be able to work on a team effectively to build the, you know, the Boeing 797 or whatever, the, the Airbus 500 or whatever the next, uh, the next big airplane is gonna be. So, so one question is, you know, what are some of the pro approaches that, that we have now? So the first approach that, that we have is, you know, uh, there's a problem archive, go solve some problems. And, and I sort of compare that to your first challenge being, let's say that I wanted to, to take up boxing, right? So, and, and I'm, not, I'm not suggesting here that ICPC is a, uh, you know, a battle sport or anything like that, but, but just as, a, as an analogy here, maybe I would like to get better at boxing. So, if this, I think the suggestion of, you know, go find the hardest problems and, and start off trying to solve those is akin to, you know, if I decided today I wanted to, to take up boxing, that I go fight uh, this guy, right? Uh, I'm gonna get beaten up. And when I get beaten up, right, when I'm unsuccessful, what am I gonna do? Do you think I'm gonna be in, in five years? Do you think I'm gonna be a great boxer? What would you do? Quit, right? I mean, what, what would any rational person do? If this is, if, if the opportunity for practice that I have is, you know, fighting this guy over and over again until I get really good, uh, I'm probably gonna find some other hobby to, to take up. So one of the things we wanna do is make sure that this is not what the, the students experience. So how is it that we invite the students to learn to be great problem solvers? Uh, you know, the, how we lead into that is very, very important and we don't want it to, the, the first challenge to be one that they just really can't be successful at. So what's the, what's the next suggestion? Well, we can give some order to problems and we can say, well, here's a punching bag uh, just punch on that for a while, right? Notice that this room that the punching bag is in, it's empty. You're by yourself, right? No real opportunity for uh, engagement. It's just we'll read, you know, read some blogs on programming. Uh, you know, read your algorithms text that's, that's this big and has a bunch of long proofs in it. Uh, and when you're done with that, uh, come back to me and, uh, and then we'll figure out what the next step is. So this sort of solitary engagement where it's, you know, you by yourself trying to figure out, even if you can figure out where to start, but it's just uh, solitary practice. Uh, not that that kind of practice isn't important, but if that's all that you're given, then again, probably you're going to say, well, this is, you know, in the other example, I, I didn't want to do it because I was getting, I was beaten up all the time. And here, you know, after punching on this bag for an hour, I'm, I'm tired and I want to do something else and I, I don't see this as a, as a social or, or an engaging experience. So I would say that, that this is also, you know, not a, great, not a great way to start. So, you know, the, the approaches at the extreme are compete, you know, just jump in. And I think that, that oftentimes that's impractical, right? The, the jump in with the, the boxer that was two, two slides back uh, and just, you know, yell at me to compete, uh, I'm, I'm going to find something else to do with my time. And the, and the problem with, with students is if you just say, you know, please prepare, go off and, and, and come back when you're ready, uh, it, it's difficult to get buy-in, right? It's, it's, it's difficult for any of us to just, uh, you know, to be told to go off and, and prepare by ourselves. And so what we need to do is we need to combine collaboration and competition. So we need collaboration because that's the way we're going to get better in groups. That's the way it's going to continue to engage us. But we need competition so that we don't trick ourselves, right? It was very easy, right? If you, couldn't, if you could run, uh, you know, if your fastest mile was five minutes, then 
you had a pretty good incentive for saying a four minute mile is, is not possible, right? But when someone shows up and runs faster than you, well, now you can't say that it's impossible. And so competition is, is important because it, it, it keeps us honest and it drives us to, to some goal, right? You don't want to spend all of your time preparing, uh, but no time actually uh, doing. Uh, but collaboration is also important because it, it helps us in our preparation. So one of the keys is these online judging systems, right? So you know, obviously university education, going to, to classes, that's, that's an important part as well. But if I really want to practice, then these online judging systems like the UVA uh, online judge system, these are critical systems to being able to develop these kinds of talents, right? I mean, as a professor, uh, I wish I had the time to sit down with everyone that wanted to be a great problem solver and, and work through their solution for every problem that they wanted to practice, but uh, first, it'd be a lot slower than the UVA system, so it'd be frustrating to watch me try to verify solutions. Uh, and the, the second thing is that, uh, you know, maybe I could handle one or two students, but I couldn't handle the thousands and thousands that show up at the UVA site uh, every day. Well, the, these online judging systems are key components, but really they're just the beginning. The question is, how do we successfully use these systems to engage these students in collaborative competition? So we really want to combine all of these ideas. So, you know, as, as we've already mentioned, as I've already mentioned, one of the, the great systems and one of the original online judge systems is the UVA system. Uh, and it's great for coming and, and finding problems and, and having them uh, judged. Uh, but uh, Felix Hamm developed a, a, an add-on to the UVA system called UHunt. Uh, so UHunt works on top of the UVA online judge. And it's that, it's that next step. It's that, that step of saying not here's an archive of problems, go you know, try to find one to start with, which is, which is a great start, but it is an assistance in finding the interesting problems. So, key component, the UVA online judge system, so I can practice problems, but step further is on top of that, this UHunt system to be able to find the kind of problem that's going to, to engage uh, the activities that I want to do for learning. The other thing is that the UVA system really provides this sense of live, uh, the UVA system and, and UHunt provide these, the sense of live interaction, right? So it's, I'm participating in something that's bigger than, than just myself. So again, you know, go back to the, the punching bag, you know, you just there for, for hours by yourself. I mean, that's, that's great practice. That's a, that's a component that you need to have, but if that's all you have, then probably eventually you're going to give up and walk away. So the, this live interactivity, this, this ability to see other people interacting with the system, other people solving problems, other people struggling with the same problem that you're struggling with, that's, that's a key important component, right? First, I know that, that I'm not the only one that's having difficulty with this problem. I can see that other people are struggling with it, and I can see that other people have solved this problem. I can even see that other people that struggled with this problem eventually solved it. So this is a form of, of collaboration, and also it's a form of engagement. So it's really this thing that draws me in to wanting to be a competitor because I'm part of a larger community. So the, the UHunt system also provides all sorts of statistics on solution attempts. So I can see how hard is this problem to solve, right? Is it, is it one of the easier ones? Is everybody, when they first try it, are they successful? Is it really, really hard? Most people that try it are, are unsuccessful. Is it so hard that a lot of people give up, right? It's just one of these extraordinarily difficult problems. Well, what do I do when I get stuck? So, so UHunt enables me to, to engage in a user forum and ask questions. How did you guys approach this problem? I'm, I'm really struggling with this. It seems like I'm missing one test case. I can't figure it out. Did anybody get stuck like this when they were solving it? 
how do I move forward? Right? So again, it's not the extreme of, of getting beaten up, and it's not the extreme of being by yourself. Right? It's being part of a community. And instead of hitting that brick wall and stopping, right, it's about engaging others in the community that have similar interest in figuring out how to get over it or get around it. Uh, you hunt also provides capabilities for virtual contests. So virtual contests, my friends and I have been practicing, we've been discussing, we've been looking at uh, solutions, and, and so now it's time to have a little fun, a little competition, right? My, my friend said last night when we were out uh, having a drink that, uh, that uh, he could solve way more problems than I could solve, and, and now it's time to see uh, who's right. So uh, UVA, provide, UVA Hunt, uh, our U Hunt provides this capability of virtual contest. So, as a group of users, if I want to have a fun game, you know, like going out on the football field and, and playing a game, I can create my own virtual football field. And, and the competition is solving problems, and I can set start times and durations. Another cool feature of U Hunt is, uh, and I'll talk about this in more detail later, is training series. So, here I have some expert. And this expert has gone through and said, here are the problems that we want to solve. Here's the order that we want to solve those problems in if, if you're preparing to be a great competitor. And here's some additional information about these problems. So it could be, oh, well, here's some easy problems. Let's just get used to the UVA system, submitting, getting feedback, debugging when we get uh, a failure, celebrating when we get an accept. Then let's look at, particular classes of problems. So this, the appropriate solution for this, or an appropriate solution for this, is a dynamic programming problem. All right, I know that. I just learned in my algorithms class, or I just read in a blog about dynamic programming. How do I apply that to this? Maybe even there's some more details on the, on the problem in, in, in explaining how it is a dynamic programming problem. So I solve a few of those. I go through a few other classes of, of, of algorithms that were talked about uh, yesterday in, in training. And then I get to the set of problems where it's my job to identify. So here's a problem. What kind of algorithm is appropriate? What kind of data structure is appropriate? And so the, the nice thing about the training series is I can organize the set of problems into a, uh, into a series that we can solve that rolls out uh, a few problems at a time that we can really collaborate together. Uh, we're going to be competitors in the future, but for now we can collaborate because we have an expert, that's, or some experts that are working, that are collaborating to build a training series, and then we're all working together to try to, to be better problem solvers by solving these problems. And then the other, uh, one of the other cool things that UHunt does is it provides an API for developers to build additional tools. I think that's one of the really neat things about uh, a lot of these systems, including the UVA system, uh, uh, which really pioneered this idea of, hey, we're going to build this infrastructure, but it's not a closed infrastructure. We're going to build a foundation. We're going to build a foundation for others to build tools on top of. And so the, uh, Felix, who did U-Hunt, said, well, I, inspired by the fact that UVA is this, the UVA Online Judge is designed as a foundation for me to build U-Hunt on top of, for me, Felix, to build U-Hunt on top of. I'm going to make U-Hunt a foundation. Right? So we saw some of the, the, uh, the presentation on Dom Judge, right? And that, that is a platform, a platform for, for teaching. Uh, it's open source. It's a platform for uh, improving. Uh, if you really want to, to work on it, they invite you to, to send uh, bug fixes, feature requests, implement the feature yourself. Even better, right? Instead of requesting a feature, here's a, here's a great idea and I've already implemented it for you. So one of the great things about uh, the ICPC community is that it really has this mindset of openness. It's about building tools, it's about building capabilities, it's about collaboration, and it's about engagement. And that's what's going to keep people coming back. So here I can look and see, uh, you know, how many, how uh, the progress over the years have actually accepted solutions for this problem, right? And I can see when people did this, you know, what, what sort of problems were they running into? Was it wrong answer? Um, uh, or time limit exceeded? Or compile errors? What were people struggling with? 
So at the beginning, I said that, that we, we can have these systems, and these systems are, are really key components. But, but I think the real question is, how do we use them? And, and my take is that engagement and engagement through collaboration is really the key to building these great problem solvers. And so uh, ICPC uh, has an organization or has a group called ICPC News. And you know, the idea with ICPC uh, is think, create, solve, right? Those are the, uh, the, the three logos for, uh, for ICPC uh, with the balloon as, as solving. And, and ICPC News, we want people to think, create, and solve, but we also want them to connect. We want them to connect with each other. We want people to know about what's going on in the community. Again, this is that engagement idea. So ICPC News is a news channel. It's exactly what it sounds like. And we talk about the U Hunt and, uh, and UVA Judge. We talk about the great contests, regional contests that go along uh, around the world. And the ICPC News, the, the purpose is very simple. We have two objectives. Uh, one is to strengthen the ICPC community through engagement. So, uh, uh, you know, people talk about the, there's the contest and the contest to put on a contest. And the people that are putting on contests uh, need to engage as well, right? They need to see themselves as part of a, as a great global community. And the other thing we want to do is improve the skills of problem solvers, both current problem solvers and future problem solvers. So these are the two things that ICPC News sets out to do. And let's talk about some of the ways that we do it. So social media, right? You want to engage. Social media is a wonderful platform. People are already in, you can build your own platform and in some, in some cases that's, that's appropriate, but if you pick a platform that people are already engaging in, you know, Facebook, Twitter, or maybe for professional reasons they're engaging in something like LinkedIn, if we can, if we can capitalize on that, on that existing platform that people are already checking, that they're already engaged in, that there's already a community on, then we can help improve engagement. Uh, we do video production, uh, and really where that, that links in is uh, the video production where we explain how to solve some of the world finals problems. I'll talk about how we use that for engagement a little later. Uh, we do story, so there's lots of just incredible stories, how the UVA system started in 1997 and how it's evolved over the years and how many people have used it. I mean, that's, that's a great story, right? And, and people want to be part of a community that has those kinds of amazing stories. And so, uh, so we look for those stories and of course they get turned into videos. And, and ICPC News also does uh, photos. So here's the uh, photo taken by one of the ICPC News photographers of uh, the 2015 world champions. All right. Again, these, this, even the photos contribute to engagement because when I see, you know, in the newspaper that the team holding the trophy over their head at the 2015 World Finals. I would like to go to a World Finals and be standing on the stage with the trophy over my head and a, and a medal around my neck. So one of the ways that we do this with ICPC News is we partnered with the UVA Online Judge and U Hunt, and we've created uh, the not cleverly named uh, U-Solve, right? So basically stole the idea. Uh, but here the idea is that you need to solve a problem in preparation for, uh, for the World Finals. So typically we run this, this training series, which is part of U Hunt, which does the judging through uh, uh, the UVA online judge system. And the idea here is that I want to engage in collaborative competition. Collaborative competition, you can combine those two, right? People sort of think of either you're collaborating or you're competing. It's not, it's not true, right? These, People are competing for bragging rights in U-Solve. We put out a problem a week in the training series on U-Hunt, and people try to solve them, and at the end of the week, we're gonna say who won and, and who didn't. But during that week, on the UVA site and in the U-Hunt site, people are gonna engage in discussions. Hey, I'm really stuck on this problem. Does anybody have any ideas? You'd be amazed, people that are competing to be the best at U-Solve will actually answer questions. Yeah, we're really all you have to do is blah, or yeah, I got stuck on that test case, or yeah, here's, here's this particular edge case you really need to think about. 
So this, we can engage the audience and we can do it in collaborative competition. So here you'll see I'm going through a sequence of problems that we've done from, from previous years. So there was, uh, and we're picking uh, previous uh, regional and world finals problems that are already in the UVA online judge. So there was one on uh, DNA sequencing. And so we look for a set of problems uh, in U-Hunt and um, Stephen and Felix uh, put this uh, course together that's uh, taught at, uh, in Singapore uh, and they let us uh, join in to their, their course. And so we use ICPC News to encourage people to try out these problems uh, and then they can try to solve the problems on the UVA site. They can try to engage about the problems on the U-Hunt site. And so the DNA sequencing is an old world finals problem that, 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 we, that is part of this U-Solve series which is really part of the uh, Felix and Stevens series. So how do we do there? You can always see uh, the, the U-Solve uh, logo somewhere buried in the picture. So you can see we've replaced the sunset with the U-Solve uh, uh, logo here. Uh, and, and this is for an island hopping problem uh, that's an old regional problem. But we invite the group and then once a week we roll out a problem. Now. You can have all the intention in the world of solving a problem in the next week, but if, if there's not a group that's working on that problem, if there's not an end of the week where we award the U-Solve champion, what are you going to do? Well, you, know, you, may, you may find some other things to do and think about doing the problem next week. Well, this sort of engagement encourages, compels you to solve the problem this week to engage with a group, with a community that's global on how to solve that problem. There's, in U-Hunt, I've already talked about this, so one of the problems we had, you can see U-Solve uh, back there on the chalkboard. Um, uh, one of the problems was a, an old uh, regional problem that was the physics problem. Uh, we have the U-Hunt discussion group, and, this, and actually during this time, the students that are taking uh, uh, the course in Singapore and the folks in the ICPC community following ICPC News are engaging in discussions uh, about, about these problems. Here's a path problem. I know it's hard to see, but the U-Solve logo is buried in the trail. Um, and the key thing here is social engagement, right? It's, we're a community coming together. When you solve the problem, tweet that you solved the problem and use the right hashtag and everybody will know that you solved it, right? When you have questions, go to U-Hunt and do discussions. At the end of the week, ICPC News will recognize you through social engagement as being a successful competitor, as being the first one to solve it, as being one of the ones to solve it, the top 10. So this sort of social engagement we hope is going to get people to be collaborative competitors. And then of course in the end there's the public recognition. So here's one of the U-Solve images uh, uh, for congratulating whoever the winner was of, of that particular week. So, so the belief is that we can use, through engagement of the community, we can use it to build better problem solvers. And for all of you in the audience, this isn't limited just to uh, university students. If you want to join in U-Solve, uh, we welcome you to, uh, to hop in and, and, and try to better your programming skills. Uh, another thing we do on ICPC News is we do coverage of World Finals problems. So in preparation for the World Finals, we have the training series, but we also have the last year's World Finals problems. Now the nice thing about World Finals problems is through ICPC News, we've captured a lot of information. So let's talk about how we roll out a, a World Finals problem. So first we'll present the problem, right? Here's the amalgamated artichoke problem, problem A. Uh, I think this must be from 2014, but I'm not sure. Uh, so we'll present the problem. Here's not all the problems from the 2014 World Finals, but here's a problem from the, the 2014 World Finals. And then every year I, uh, I uh, send an email to Miguel and say, I need all the URLs for the 2014 World Finals problems in the UVA site so people can uh, solve the problems and he's always nice enough to to send me the, the the URLs for the individual problems and so we invite people to go to the UVA site and try to see if they can solve the problem. Now 
hopefully people are working on the problem and, and a few days later we'll actually give, uh, captured from the judges, we'll give problem history and problem insight. So the judges will say, well, I was sitting by the pool and I was eating an artichoke. I don't, I don't know how they invented this problem. Uh, and, you know, suddenly it came to me and I went and, write, and I typed up right then and there by the pool eating an artichoke. I, uh, I typed up uh, this world finals problem. And so, and, and the judge might give some insight. And so if you haven't solved the problem yet, well, maybe this, maybe the, the history will inspire you, maybe the insight uh, will give you that nudge to solve the problem that you couldn't solve. We invite you again to the UVA site, right? Now that you've seen this insight, go solve the problem. Again, collaboration, engagement, encouragement, then the next thing we'll do is the, the ICPC analytics team uh, will put together a video explaining, through ICPC News will shoot a video of one of the ICPC analysts uh, showing how uh, at a high level to solve the problem. Oh, this is really a blah problem and you just have to remember that, you know, you know this particular equation from physics or I don't know, I don't know what the artichoke equation was, uh, but you can watch this video produced by ICPC News of the ICPC analyst that tells you here's how to solve the problem. Not the source code, but you know, it's really just to this problem and all you have to do is, is remember this and this. And then we invite you again to the UVA site. So it's this iterative engagement. Again, I think the, the, the key to building these great problem solvers is engagement. And that's what this is, is attempting to do. It's attempting, it's attempting to engage. We give you the problem. We give you a hint. Right? We give you a video where an expert shows you how to solve the, solve the problem, all the time inviting you to come try to solve it yourself. Here's another idea. Um, so so there, there's uh, this skill that people have called, supposedly people have called ESP, right? Has everybody heard of ESP? Extrasensory perception, right? You sort of know what's going to happen in the future, or you know what somebody's thinking. Well, we haven't figured out how to develop ESP. That would be pretty awesome. Uh, I haven't figured it out yet. Uh, so we're going to try instead to develop LSP. And, and LSP is going to be a way that people learn how to solve problems from the beginning. So, you know, one approach to this is, well, you can have all this engagement, but, you know, to really be successful at the problems, you've got to know all those data structures, and you've got to know all these algorithms. And so, when you're done with all those classes, then we want you to engage in, the, in, in ICPC preparation. It's too late. Well, it's not too late. Obviously, people have done that and been successful. But I, I think that that is is not as early as we could be doing it. And so LSP is this idea of solving lots of very small problems. And this is solving lots of really small problems for beginning programmers. So your introduction to computer science class, maybe even if you could push it out to the high schools, your high school classes, you want to think about the idea that coding is a skill. And how do I develop skills, right? How do I become that great boxer? Well, I've got the speed bag that I can practice on. And I've got to develop skills. I've got to develop this hand-eye coordination before I can even have a prayer of being able to train to be a great boxer. Well, here, I've got to develop those kinds of coding as a skill with daily practice. If I want to learn to be a great uh, to, to be a great musician and play an instrument, what do I do? I practice on a daily basis. So if coding is a skill, right, if it's, if it's a thing that you learn as a skill by practicing over time, then it's got to be developed and the practice should be daily. Well, I can't make you solve five hours of World Finals problems every day. You probably don't have the time to do that. So what can I do? We can engage in, especially early on, this idea of solving lots of really small problems. And the other thing is this, this idea of LSP lets you, solve, lets you start early. So when I have my intro to computer, scientists, uh, computer science class and they've learned about loops 
why don't I have a small problem on write a loop that counts to 10? Or whatever is appropriate, right? So the idea here is that by doing these small problems, we can start simple, we can monitor progress, and we can have short success, right? So instead of my first attempt being against the, you know, that, the ripped boxer that's going to beat me up, my first attempt is in a social sphere engaging in something that I'm going to be successful at, right? So how do we use this? Well, you know, we can give typical assignments, right? You give the big programming assignment, you, you teach two or three concepts in your computer programming class, you give some big assignment, right? I don't know about students in Spain, maybe this is just unique to the US, but uh, US students, uh, you give them two weeks to do an assignment and they start two days before it's due. You give them a week to do the assignment, they start two days before it's due. You give them a month to do the assignment, they start two days before it's due, right? So these kind of large assignments, uh, they're resented, uh, they're not bite-sized, they don't give immediate success, uh, and they have very large granularity because it's trying to, you know, did you figure out loops and functions and recursion and, and I came up with this brilliant problem to assign to my class that combines all of these ideas together. When they solve this problem, they're going to be brilliant at recursion and all sorts of stuff. Well, if you're a student looking at that, especially when you're new in the program, I mean, that's huge, right? It's, it's, there's nowhere to take a bite because it's just a giant problem. It's hard to know where to start. So these, this LSP is this idea that, uh, that I can start with these small problems. I mean, you know, world champions need world champion problems. But those problems for many programmers, especially when they're early, they're, they're incredibly intimidating. So instead we can solve many simple problems daily to practice. And, and uh, this, this technique can be used, again, early in the curriculum. Again, I'm even encouraging first class in the curriculum, uh, to reinforce concepts from your class. Teach them about loops and give them five problems, little small problems to do with different loops, for loop, while loop, do while loop. They can practice, uh, they can practice the skills that you've taught in class. Instead of practicing several skills in a large problem, they, they practice in bite-sized chunks. They practice daily at building a, a skill. And then if that gives you time in, the, in class, instead of re-explaining the loops that you explained last time, right, it gives you a chance for, uh, to engage your students in higher level reasoning. Right? They, they, they develop those skills, and so you can start talking about higher level design and algorithmic concepts because they have the foundation. Um, so what are some of the criteria for a system, right? We said that we want to do engagement, that, that, that these online systems are key to all of this, but the, the question is how do we do it? So there's some, there's some criteria for systems that are going to be effective at doing this. One is you have to have the ability to manage exclusive classes, right? I want to see how my students are doing. I don't want to see how they're doing compared to everybody in the world. I want to see how my students are doing. I want to see are my students trying to solve the problem? What are my students stuck on? I want to be able to provide a, a, a range of problems from uh, super simple to algorithmic, specific algorithmic based problems to specific data structure problems. Uh, and I need the ability to create my own simple problems and my own simple test. I need an interface for the, for the instructor to track who tried problems, to see who's failing, who's succeeding, who's not trying. Uh, and I want, and I, of course I want access to the student source code. So this is a little bit different mentality uh, than me as an individual practicing on a site. It's sort of us as a group collaborating in a class working on a site. So uh, this LSP idea was actually pioneered by a professor at Baylor, at Baylor University named Bill Booth. And this is being taught uh, starting last summer, this is being taught in our Intro to Computer Science class. In our intro to computer science class, the very first class the freshmen take, they're going to solve more than 80 problems in 15 weeks. Now, are these 80 world finals problems? No, right? That would be amazing. We would win the world championship, I'm sure. No, these are, these are 80 uh, small problems, but they're going to solve a lot of them. 
Uh, and, and, and this is, as I said, this was started this last summer and it's, it's continuing now. And our preliminary, preliminary observations that uh, the professors have made, because uh, uh, now several professors in our department are using this, is the professors anecdotally believe, right? This is, this is very preliminary, so, you know, who knows? Uh, but the professors believe that this approach gives a better understanding of lecture concepts. You see it, you go do it. Not you see it, then you see the next thing, then you see the next thing, and then you try to combine it all in an assignment two weeks later. But you see it, you walk out of class, you do it. They, they have noted uh, a significant increase in coding quality. The students appear to, appear to be better prepared for instruction, for deep understanding, when in the past it was just struggling the, with them to get through whatever the last assignment was because it was combining all sorts of ideas. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have the big assignments. I'm saying add this to it. Um, and it gives, it, it, they've observed that it gives them time for more advanced concepts like design elements, not just survival, right? How do I make this C++ program do what I want it to do? It keeps core dumping or whatever. Um, uh, so the performance strongly correlates uh, in the preliminary analysis. The, the performance on, the, on, this, uh, on this site uh, for lots of small problems has shown a strong correlation to predicting the final exam score, right? So it's statistically significant. If you look at, did they engage in solving lots of small problems? If the answer is yes and they were successful, you can predict uh, fairly accurately what their final exam score, and the final exam score is a conceptual exam. It's not a practicum. It's not a programming in front of a computer. It's a written exam. And uh, for the first, this first fall exam, 64% uh, of the variation in that exam can be explained by this LSP performance, right? 64% of the variation, pretty strong correlation. Now, this is preliminary because who knows, right? Maybe the ones that did well on it, it's self-selecting. So the ones that did well on it were the ones that want it, that, that enjoy this kind of stuff. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's not causal, it's just predictive. We, you know, we don't know yet. But, Again, looking at these sort of anecdotal observations and some of the preliminary uh, uh, results that uh, Professor Booth has come up with, it's, it's encouraging. And it allows that early, uh, early adoption of this collaborative community problem solving. Um, I'm about out of time, so I'll skip through this quickly. Uh, we've been working, so one of the things to, to do this for large collaboration are really large online contests. So we've been working with uh, Dom Judge lately to try to adapt contest control systems to push them into the cloud so they can scale up. We've been looking at container virtualization uh, and what we really want is if you're willing to hold an online contest, put it out there. Right now, if you want to do that, you have to really worry about whether you're going to be able to scale, right? If they were talking last night about the UVA system and the night before the World Finals and, you know, can we keep it, can we keep it running because of the sudden demand, right? What we really want is to be able to use cloud computing so that, it, you know, the, the cloud basically handles the, the expansion and it does it in an, in an automated way uh, without really any oversight, right? I mean, I, I, I uh, sort of think of it as the Amazon model, if you're familiar with the, the Amazon services, right? You give, it a, give them a credit card, they charge you per CPU cycle, per byte stored, per byte sent on the network. So if you put together a contest, let's say we were to do this in the Amazon uh, cloud, uh, you just give them a credit card. If five people show up, then, you know, they charge your credit card 50 cents right, because very few CPU cycles have been used. And if 5,000 people show up, well, maybe they charge you, you know, 500 euros, but if you had a contest with 5,000 people, you know, we can find $500, right? But you don't have to, right, you don't have to think about it in advance how many people are gonna show up, right? Right now, you have to sort of anticipate the worst case and build out for that. That's expensive. And you only need it for, for a few hours. Instead, what we want to do is we want to say, don't worry about the, the contest. You put together the problems, you put together some great test cases, upload it into, into the cloud using Dom Judge as the cloud control system, and it's, it's going to scale. 
you don't have to worry about it. You focus on, on the thing that's important, that's really important, which is creating really great problems that are unambiguous and have awesome test cases. Uh, ICPC has been developing, uh, um, oh, I'm sorry. So we're also looking at componentizing the system. The portal is how I interact with the contest control system. The auto judge component, uh, I have to save some state in a database. Who's logged on, what are their submissions? And I need to have some sort of queue. So, so these are the things that we're looking at. Typically these contest control systems are all together and we want to start thinking about these components as separate so people can work on what they're interested in. And the ICPC, we've been doing several things to try to help this, uh, getting cloud access, working with community developers like Dom Judge, providing web services for initializing your contest and reporting results, and providing third-party credentials so you don't have to give out usernames and passwords, right? You just log in with your ICPC credentials. So in conclusion, uh, collaboration really provides engagement and engagement is the key to really get people to be long-term uh, preparers for problem solving. Of course, we need competition because the competition sets the standard. It raises the standard when we all compete. So how do we want to do this? We want to build a culture of skill, practice. And what I'm encouraging, uh, based on the stuff that Professor Booth has done, is start early. Start day one, right? Uh, we want to build a community of problem solvers. We want people to identify with the ICPC community or the global problem solving community because if you're part of a community, you participate in the activities that are important to the community. So we need to establish this identity. We want to build a, a foundation for the next level. The next level for the students to be better problem solvers. The next level for the volunteers that are building the next cloud contest control system or the next cloud uh, coaching system. And we want to be able to help with setting the expectation. So it's your, the expectation for you is going to be set by the performance of your community. And so it's really, even though we think of you know, competition as kind of a solitary activity, or maybe just a team, a, an, an activity with just my team, uh, the preparation for that is very much an, a community engaging activity. And with that community identity, we're all going to want to be better problem solvers because you know, my friend solved uh, more problems than I did, and so I've got to stay up late tonight and, and, and do better. <laughs>